Okay, so today we're talking about the CSS is, where, and has pseudo clauses. So these are relatively new uh, additions to CSS. There used to be a pseudo class called matches, and that's what is and where are replacing. And we'll talk about the similarities and differences between is and where. We're also going to talk about has, and I'll even throw in a little bit talking about uh, the not pseudo class. Now you can combine that with has. All right, so I have some basic CSS here. Uh, just a fairly simple page, a couple of paragraphs, a main and a header area, H1, a couple of H2s, an image, just to have a variety of HTML elements and classes that I can use to target. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to start looking at the specificity and how that is impact with these pseudo classes. So in general, if you're uh, rusty on specificity, you've got four numbers that make up the value for specificity. So there's the important selector, ID styles, class styles, and pseudo classes, and a few other things, and tags. It's kind of, it kind of works like the version number for software. The number on the left is of much more importance than the one on the right. And as you add up your selectors, you add to the various columns. So when you've got an element on the page and you've got multiple selectors that apply to that element, this is how they get ranked to apply the CSS. So this one right here, header, this is my selector and its specificity. And you can even see with the, the mouse over in here, they've got 001. They don't have the first number for the important, but that's the specificity level of this selector. So I've got one tag, no classes, no IDs, and no important. Simple enough. So let's add is and talk about what that's doing. So header is. And inside of here, I'll use a different color. So I'm going to say header is and with no space in between here, what we're doing is we're saying, OK, I want to apply some CSS um, based on some property that I define in here. Now, my header up at the top here has the class masthead. So if I put that inside of here, now what I'm saying is headers, if it has the class masthead. So really, this is the same thing as if I'd written header dot masthead, but it allows me to provide a list. So if it's got the class masthead or blah, or hello, or whatever else. I've got a list of possible matches. So any one of these things applied to this because there's no space. This is the element we're talking about. Now my specificity for this, no important, no tags. This has got a tag, so it'll be dot one at the end. And then the value that we put in here for the classes is itself as a pseudo class doesn't have a value. What it does is it looks through this list and whichever element inside of there has the highest level of specificity, that's what gets used. So we've got header, the tag gets one, and then these are all the same. They're all a class. So I put the one in there for that. Now this is going to have a higher level of specificity than just header on its own. So 1.1 is higher than just 0.1. So if we look at our page, there we go. So the mass head, which is this header element, has this color gold applied, and this one is overriding the gold. Now, what if we did this? We said header space, and then put the is. Now we're talking about a child element of the header or a descendant of the header. And now I'm going to define the possible characteristics of that. So I can say h1, h2 or something else. These are my possible matches. So I'm saying I want to style the h1 or h2 element inside of the header, either one. And when I find a match, let's put a color, uh, let's say orange red. My specificity in here, zero for the Orton, zero for the ID. We've got both those the same. They're a tag. So we're going to get a right here, two for the tag, one for this, and one for this. No classes, and two tags, the header and the H1, or the header and the H2. And this is 
what's being applied. So inside of here, it's whatever has the class, that's what's getting the styling. And here, it's whatever we have inside of here, whatever the tag is, so H1 or H2, both of them inside of the header will get this. So if I come in, there we go, both the H1 and H2 have that. So this brings us to a, sort of a, a common use case for is. We can say header H1 comma header H2 and then color orange red. Or we can do it this way. So for the header, we're looking for H1 or H2s that are inside of the header. Instead of having to write the two lines of CSS, we create a list of things. They all have header in common. And we can do the same thing by starting it off. If I said um, header H2 and main H2, so the H2 element inside of either the header or the main, we can say color, we'll say badass. So we get the green, the H2 inside of main, the H2 inside of the header. The style is applying to both, as you would expect. But using the is selector, if I just comment this out, with the is selector, I can say, I can even start with the is selector, and I can say if I go to header, or I'm inside of main, and then I want to find an H2 that is inside of either one of those things. So just sort of the reverse of what we're doing here, but I'm looking at two different parts of the page and saying the H2, I'm going to be able to set the color as badass for that, and I get the same effect. So this is a very common use case for is. Now that brings me to where. We have a where pseudo selector. And I could do the same thing that I do, the exact same things that I'm doing with is. So we can replace any of these is's with where. And if I put a different color in here, Rebecca purple, the difference between these two things is only the specificity. Is and where work the same way you provide a list of potential selectors. So whether it's before or after the other thing that's in common, doesn't really matter. Is goes through this list looking for the highest level of specificity of anything in the list, and that's the value that gets used for the is. So my specificity in this one, no important, no IDs, no classes, even though is is a pseudo class, it's using the value of the whatever's inside, we get two. So this is one tag and then this is the second, or this is one and this is the second. With where, it doesn't matter what you put inside of here. The value in specificity for a where pseudo class is always zero. It does not matter. You don't get to count this as part of the specificity. So my specificity here is always going to be just 0, 0, 0, 1. I've got one tag, H2, and that's what's determining my specificity. So this is a lower level than this. This will get applied after this one. So all I see is the green. I don't see the purple in there. If I commented this line out, now I see the purple for this one and the orange red is being applied, which is the one that we applied up here. So that's the one that's being applied after this one. All right, so is and where do the exact same thing. You can do it before or after. It's just providing a list of potential matches. Is, you get to pick the highest level in here, and that's what gets used for the specificity. With where, it's always going to be zero. It doesn't count towards the specificity total. All right, so that's is and where. Now has, this one's a lot of fun. For anyone who's been trying to target a parent element, if you've ever said, okay, well, I want to style this parent element if one of its children does something. That's what has is gonna give us. So if I say here, P has span, what I'm saying is any paragraph that has a span inside of it, this is the style that I want to apply to the parent, the paragraph. So the style applies to the parent element. So we'll say, let's just make a large font size, 2rem. If we look in here, 
this paragraph has a span, this second one has a span, this third one does not, this the one on the footer does not. There we go. So the first two paragraphs, but not the third and not the one in the footer. And it's not the spans that we're styling, it is the paragraphs themselves. So we're applying the styles to the parent element, the thing that has this other. We've got um, image. Okay, I can say that if it's got an image inside of it, so same sort of idea that we were doing before, and say border left, uh, one REM solid red. There, so the paragraph that has the image, this one right here, gets the solid red border. Now, if you want to be a little bit more specific and you want to say, okay, if the paragraph has an image, great, but the image has to be a direct child, a direct descendant. So I can say this, the image has to be directly inside the paragraph. It can't be a grandchild or a great, great grandchild. Now VS Code is complaining about this. It doesn't like the angle bracket in here, but this is still valid CSS. This image is a direct descendant of this paragraph. So we still have that border. But if we take our span, we remove it from here and we put the span around the image. So inside the span, I've got the image and the text. Now the image is no longer a direct descendant of that paragraph. So this is not working if I've got the paragraph with the span, with the image inside like that. We can't do it. The image has to be outside of the span. It has to be a child of the paragraph. Okay, so we can do that. If you want to do things like um, a paragraph that has a uh, sibling that comes right after it, which is also a paragraph. We could do that. We can say has plus P. So it has a sibling following it that is a paragraph. And this is going to be useful. Let's say if I put a order bottom, this could be useful in lists or navigation menus. Uh, let's just say 2px solid cornflower blue. There we go. So the first one and the second one both have this blue underline. So imagine this was a list. The third element, the final paragraph, does not have it. So if you wanted a border on the bottom of every single one of your list items, but not the last one, this is a way that you could do it. You could say, I want to find all of my list items that have a list item that comes right after them. This would be a way that you can do it without having to say, okay, the last item does not have um, one using nth child or last child and first child. You can target them different ways, but this is a way that to, you can do it. And you can say the last one is not going to get this border. So I just want borders that are in between. Okay, so that's with has, we're talking about styling the parent element based on things that are inside of it or based on properties that are inside of it. We can say, if I've got a paragraph that does not have a span inside of it. Like that. So here we're going to be talking about this final paragraph plus the one in the footer. So if I say color cornflower blue again, and font size 1.5 REM, make it a little bit bigger. We're talking about only these two paragraphs right here, because this one has a span, this one has a span. So we're using has span, but then we're flipping that. We're saying it doesn't have this condition. So again, we're using the parent, but based on things that it does not have inside of it, there we go, my footer and the final paragraph. These two things are styled because they do not have spans inside them. So can be very useful. And one last one that you can think about um, with your forms. Hey, I want to style my form based on whether or not there's anything inside of it that is other pseudo classes. 
hey, if there's anything invalid, or if there's anything indeterminate, if there's anything that is out of range, so I've got a, a, a range selector and I'm, I've got a number that's too big or too small, or placeholder shown, you know, any one of those reasons. We want to style the form. If any of those things, if any of those conditions exist inside of our form, and this is going to have the specificity, there's nothing important, there's nothing with IDs, with here, we look at all of these, they're all pseudo classes. So with those pseudo classes, we're talking about having a value of one is the highest a class value. So one for that, and then one for the form itself. So this one is one of these values. And then the one for the tag, which is the form. So has is working the same way as is and where, where you pick the highest value inside of there, and that's the one that gets applied. Okay, and that is is, where, and has. Uh, if you want a copy of this code, um, I've got links to that down in the description. There's a code just that's got the HTML and the CSS. You can throw your own image in there. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.